Hey everyone, excited to be back for this week's edition of Frequently Asked Questions for Commercial Real Estate. In today's video, what I wanted to do was talk about a topic that actually is one that I've been reached out to several times about uh, from several of you all on LinkedIn and even, even on the different platforms that I, that I pushed content out on. And that is, how do you create your commercial real estate newsletter? So in today's video, we're going to share what the impetus or the decision-making process was to start a uh, commercial real estate newsletter. And then I'm going to share... Uh, insights as to how I create it and and what strategies that I employ to make sure that I can produce it on a monthly basis. So before we dive in this video, I'd greatly appreciate if you can like and subscribe to this channel. It really does make a difference in the YouTube algorithm and ensures more and more people can hear this message and learn about the many facets of commercial real estate. So now you've done that, go ahead and like and subscribe below. Let's go ahead and dive right into this episode. All right. So as far as the impetus for deciding to make a commercial real estate newsletter, and that what, what the real reasoning is, is that you want to try to become a recognized expert in whatever vertical you're exploring within the commercial real estate industry. In my case, I'm pretty local as far as Louisville's concerned, so I operate primarily in the region. And so I wanted to make sure that my potential clientele, which would be business owners and investors that are looking for opportunities in the Louisville metro and surrounding areas, would know what I do and, and could, could actually... Um, you know, look to me as far as an expert is concerned for these types of properties. And so because of that, I decided what better way to do that than to create a monthly newsletter that I distribute on LinkedIn and various other platforms to be able to showcase my expertise. And so there's different ways to approach the newsletter process. I've seen a lot of people who do create newsletters that are very unique and that they compile the data themselves and then they spend, you know, a good amount of time creating uh, blog posts pertaining to whatever the the focal point is for that particular discussion. You know, maybe they're, you know, talking about industry trends. I know one of my really good friends, uh, Chad Griffiths, has a phenomenal newsletter where he does a lot of, of uh, in-depth analysis into the industrial market. I've seen various other uh, commercial real estate brokers and agents do similar top things as well. And that's a very great approach. And I, I know a lot of people who are able to create uh, quite a bit of uh, notoriety utilizing that particular approach. Now, in my case... What I've chosen to do is is kind of become a compiler of data. And the reason why I've decided to do that is because it makes it a lot easier to be able to produce the content. So in my case, I produce a lot of content. Obviously, I do a lot of these videos. I have a podcast. I've got a lot of other things. I've written several books. You know, we're, we're working on a course. So there's a lot of things that I'm actively working on. And in order for me to make sure that I'm able to produce all these things at a high level, I've decided on the newsletter front to be able to compile information, compile links, compile all these different things, and then distribute it to the the, the, the the general populace. And again, I'm still the 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 watering hole of information, but as far as me creating the content and, and showcasing, oh, you know, maybe creating a, a very in-depth analysis on the Louisville market and all the things that you need to consider as you're looking at these types of opportunities, that that's more what I do on these videos versus actually my newsletter. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll dive into the my my most recent newsletter so you can kind of see what I'm what I'm talking about. So so as we look at this newsletter, oh and by the way, I know I've had a lot of people ask me about uh how I create these newsletters, Canva. So if you go to Canva, there's actually templates out there for newsletters. And so I picked a template and modified it accordingly. And one of the best things about Canva is it's super easy to plug and play. So when you're creating a newsletter, what I would highly recommend is to create a structure for your newsletter. And then from there, as you start you know, modifying it every single month, you wanna make sure that it's easy to just be able to push in content and take it out or do whatever you need to do. Uh, you want it to be very easily modifiable. So that's just my piece of advice. So as you can see, I start off by just creating a very basic boilerplate template for my newsletter. This is something that I came up with when I first created the, the, um, the, the, the template. What the way I like to approach the process of creating or providing this information is I like to compile news. So our local news, a lot of this this information is pulled from our local Louisville business first. So if you if you yourself have a business first, um, you know, or some other periodical that 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 follows commercial real estate uh, information locally. I would highly recommend incorporating something similar. And again, you don't have to follow the exact same approach that I followed. That I thought I'd just provide context and insights into what I do. So uh, I, then I usually provide some form of national news. You know, I'm I'm a big reader, so I always follow these different uh, you know online mediums, whether that's Biz Now, 
Uh, you got CNBC. You've got a variety of different. Uh, you know, the New York Times has phenomenal information about commercial real estate, and they have a a, a, a column that follows that as well. So I try to follow all that information as well. So I just from the things that I'm reading that I feel is, are interesting. This is where I provide that information. Next up is the commercial market insights. A lot of this is actually. Uh, you know, reports or some other form of insights provided by national, uh, you know, entities and agencies. You know, there's Cushman Wakefield provides phenomenal reporting. Uh, so do the other big brands, CBRE, uh, you know, JLL, other, other, other larger brokerages can provide some unique insights. And then the National Association of Realtors always releases reports as well. So depending on what it is, I will provide context here. And that's really what the, it's the reports that, that, a lot of these larger agencies provide. And then I create a link that allows them to go uh, find that source as well. As far as, you know, the market overview, this is all based on your uh, local, uh, either multiple listing service, if that's what you call it locally. In our case, it's called KCREA. Uh, as commercial agents, we subscribe to the service. And so we have access to a lot of this data. And so a lot of this is just pulling reports. So, you know, this is the current statistics for Kentucky for you know, if this is August, it's usually looking back a month. So in this case, it would be July. Uh, you can kind of see, you know, those totals. That's all through reporting uh, generation that we can do through KCREA. Same goes for Louisville. You can do the same thing. As far as comparable sales are concerned, this is what you you have as far as your your um your your multiple listing service. So in KCREA, you can look up comparable sales. Whether if you don't have access to that, you can go to the local PVA. If you know certain buildings have sold, you know you look at your local, uh, you know, uh, deed office or whatever else to find out what things sold for, when they sold, etc. And then you compile that data so people have an idea of what things are going for in different areas. And again, you know, this is beneficial because let's imagine that I own a property down the street from this this first property. You know, that could be very beneficial for me to reference. So. Same thing goes for lease. These feature properties are the, the listings that I typically have. So this is, these are all my listings right now. As you can see, I got a few active ones that we're, you know, looking to to sell as well. And then recent content. You know, obviously you, you want to always have an opportunity to market the things that you're doing. You know, that's why I created a recent content page. So, you know, you got the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast. You got this Commercial Real Estate 101 podcast. You've got my CRE FAQ videos, which is this one that you're watching. So you know, whatever opportunity I have to be able to present more content to people, that's what I try to do. And then finally, you want people to reach out to you if they they find this information helpful. And this has been awesome because I link, I link this uh, this this button to my Calendly or my calendar, so then they can book a time to have a conversation or whatever else. And so, that's kind of an overview of what I do um, as far as a newsletter is concerned. It's become to a point now where I can put together a newsletter very quickly. Uh, it doesn't take me too long, and I do this on a monthly basis, and I've gotten ex excellent reception from it. And I've had people subscribe and follow the newsletter so that every time that I release one, they're notified, and they ultimately can read it and engage with it. And hopefully, you know, over time, that if you decide to pursue a similar approach, it will benefit you immensely over the course of your time in the brokerage business. So hopefully you gain some value for this video. I hope you yourself decide to pursue a newsletter as far as an option. I think it's a great way to be able to establish yourself as a thought leader in your space. If you guys are looking to buy, sell, or lease commercial property here in Louisville, Kentucky, I would greatly appreciate you reaching out. I think I'd be able to help you immensely when it comes to uh, the things that, that you guys are looking to do. Feel free to reach out to me. My number is 502-536-7315, or you can reach me via email at rafaelcrasantigroup.com. Thanks again so much for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time.